In today's video, I'd like to get back into uh, prophecy. And um, for some, it's not that exciting of a subject. Some folks are just pan trip, you know, it's all going to pan out in the end. Well, whereas others are very super excited about it. And, I mean, let's face it, today we're dealing with that phrase, Tiawaki, the end of the world as we know it, because things are really speeding up fast. And when we look at the signs for the second coming, and we understand that Jesus is coming for us in the rapture before that, uh, I believe things are very close indeed. Um, what with everything going on in the world, the Bible says that evildoers and seducers shall wax worse and worse, and there, there is just no end to the evil. I remember whenever I was a child, you know, I would hear a bad story here and there, and then uh, pretty soon it was like two or three stories a month and two or three stories a week. Now it's many, many stories in a day of just really bad news of of uh, diseases and um, murders and, and all kinds of bad wickedness going on. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but um, I long to be in heaven with Jesus. And I think for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be dealing with my Prophecy Timeline series. Um, I know it's perhaps not as popular as some of the other series. And some may think that I'm off base with some of my thoughts about the matter, um, but I truly am basing this on scripture. Um, Moses and Elijah are going to return um, at the beginning of the seven year tribulation. There is going to be a fight over the Temple Mount. There's going to be a fight over Jerusalem. If you look at Zechariah 12 and verse 3, um, Jerusalem is a cup of trembling unto all nations. It's a burdensome stone. Um, we see there's going to be a big fight. And I've already covered the uh, Psalm 83 war, which I believe is really the first phase of the Gog-Magog war. It is the immediate neighbors surrounding Israel and even those within Israel's borders. And they will rise up in a type of infatata and join together to attack Jerusalem. They are going to be outraged when they see the the manner in which God asserts his uh, awesome authority over the Temple Mount and he's going to accomplish his will, he's going to accomplish his objective. There is going to be another temple. That's a fact. And I know that there are some who may listen to this channel and they're not even pre-trip. And uh, perhaps you do think I'm off base some. That's okay because if you believe on Jesus Christ, it's not going to prevent you going up to heaven with me and the rest of the saints. Um, not everyone understands prophecy. And even those who've studied it many years, there are still many questions that are yet to be answered. Um, but nonetheless, we can see a big picture. We can see that Jesus Christ has fulfilled the first four feasts. He has fulfilled the first three through his death, his burial, his resurrection. <clears throat> the fourth feast is the giving of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost and the birth of the church and the church age. There will be a completion of that church age with the Feast of Trumpets, which will occur in some future fall date, um, some future year, perhaps this year, I can only hope, uh, perhaps next year. But sometime in the foreseeable future, um, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to fulfill the Feast of Trumpets, which usually happens in, um, it's going to happen in either September or early October in that time frame. Now, after that is the Day of Atonement. That is the regathering of Israel and Israel's judgment, the judgment of the nations. Um, all of Israel will stand before the Lord. That's the second coming. Then after that, you have the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Feast of Tabernacles is um, the Lord Jesus Christ dwelling with mankind upon the earth in the millennial reign. That's 1,000 years of peace. Um, he will put down all rebellion. Um, 
So I want to put this timeline in as best order as I can. And originally I was going to um, go over the 144,000 and their role. However, I'm going to wait until we have covered Gog Magog, which is the second phase of the battle. Um, like I said, the first phase is those nations directly around Israel. And Ezekiel 38 and 39 show, after previous chapters um, of Ezekiel 36 and 37, you have seen the rebirth of Israel and Israel back in their own land after thousands of years after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. And the next time, Jerusalem will not be destroyed. Jerusalem will be defended. Um, so this battle is going to pretty much eliminate all the nations around Israel that could be a threat except for one group. And that is um, the Antichrist and the Roman Empire that's going to be revived and Europe. So the Antichrist will come from that. Now, after the rapture of the church, the Antichrist will be revealed. However, he will not ascend to power until midway through the tribulation. The Bible makes it clear that his time upon the earth to rule is 42 months. He's given the second half of the three and a half years. You see, Moses and Elijah are going to be in Israel the first three and a half years. They're going to send out the 144,000 because remember, the saints, the church, saints will no longer be on the earth so god is going to need a new evangelism tool to get the gospel to every creature um, people who think that we're going to be mid-trib or even post-trib are erroneous in their thinking because the church um, will be side by side then with the 144,000, and uh, that would appear that the church was a failure in evangelizing the world Whereas God shows us that we are victorious, that we are overcomers, that we have done that which he called us to do, and the world was indeed reached for Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul and them was said that of the apostles that they turned the world upside down, and they were already getting the gospel to every creature, and it was spreading out all over the world. But in this time, the Jews will be mostly concerned about rebuilding the temple and becoming reoriented to their past and um, learning about their Messiah. There will be some who reject him. Um, one third of the Jews, one out of every three, will come through the fire, the Bible says, and they will live physically in the Millennial Kingdom. There will also be much death upon the earth through wars, famines, pestilence, everything else. And most of the world's population is going to be destroyed. But there will be a remnant from the nations and they will repopulate their nations and live in peace and come to Jerusalem every year. They will send emissaries or ambassadors to the Feast of Tabernacles where the Lord Jesus Christ will be worshipped. And... Uh, but meanwhile, the point that we're at in this prophecy timeline is about within the first 30 days. Immediately after the rapture, brothers and sisters, things are going to happen so fast. Um, you may think, well, it takes a lot of time to mobilize armies. But look at the technology we have. We have planes that can fly around the world. Um, we have all kinds of military equipment in the world, and it's going to be used. But when the North Army of, of Russia, Iran, Turkey, which they've already united, are going to come against Israel, the mountains of the north, and then there's going to be an army from the south, the Lord Jesus Christ, through the prophets Moses and Elijah, are going to defeat this army. In fact, five-sixths of them will be destroyed. One-sixth, God will spare and I believe that that is so they can go back to their own nation and witness of what God did, of his mighty works. And once this happens, when Russia is out of the way and Turkey and Iran and, and all these uh, different players that have caused so much tension and problems, then 
the Antichrist kingdom in Europe, um, which is relatively weak and uh, not much into war anymore, they will be rising up to take their place because they won't have any enemies there in that neighborhood to oppose them. And sadly, their objective in the second half of the tribulation, um, this Roman emperor, this Antichrist, and his group of folks is going to be tried to hunt down the Jews and kill them all. Of course, that's Satan behind the scenes. Um, Satan will be indwelling the Antichrist during the second half of the tribulation. But right now at the point of the timeline, we have just completed the first phase of the Gog-Magog War, known as Psalm 83. We're going to be looking at the final phase, the Gog-Magog War itself. After that, you will have um, the rise of the Antichrist, the 144,000, what happens at mid-trib with the Antichrist, uh, the judgments that come upon the earth during the second half of the tribulation, um, and then, of course, the second coming, the millennial reign, the final judgment, uh, the great white throne judgment at the end of the millennium, and then eternity. So, we are going to uh, briefly start on this Gog Magog uh, war. And remember, this takes place after the rapture, after the first phase where um, Israel has, has defeated their neighbors um, through, I believe, divine intervention. Um, God takes care of things because God wants Israel to turn to Him. He wants Israel to trust Him. And brothers and sisters, when it comes to Israel, God does signs and wonders. God does great things. And remember, the prophets Moses and Elijah will both be there. Um, I've already covered in Revelation chapter 11 what happens with Moses and Elijah. But here, if you will turn to Ezekiel chapter 38, we're going to get started today and then we're going to be looking at it in more detail in the next video. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. Now this phrase, Son of man, Jesus Christ often used of himself. Remember, that which we see in the New Testament was somewhere in the Old Testament. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. And I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togarma of the north quarters and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared. And prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So someone named Gog is going to be heading this alliance. I believe that Gog is Russia. And I have believed that for many years, even though I have seen some say, no, it's just Turkey. But Turkey is already covered in Togarma and Gomer. So some of these nations are easy to decipher. You have Persia, which is Iran. Um, it was called Persia up until about 1933. And you have Ethiopia, that's still the nation today, and Libya. Now notice that these nations are the second ring of nations around Israel. The first ring has already been destroyed. You've got Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, perhaps even Iraq. Um, you have Jordan, Egypt. So all these nations have already been um, decimated. They've been wiped out. Perhaps not totally, but their armies were destroyed. So now you have a second ring of nations, and it is going to be led by Russia. Now, 
why anybody at this point in time with all the news going on would scoff at the idea of Russia leading this to me that would just be mind-boggling I have believed since I was a teenager that it was going to be Russia I had studied it a lot um, Gomer I wasn't too sure about I used to think Gomer was Germany I am not sure that Gomer is going to be Germany I think it is the western part of Turkey so nonetheless we have these nations um, allying together um, Russia has formed an alliance with both Iran and Turkey however Iran and Turkey do not get along um, Recep Erdogan he's got his own agenda over there in Turkey and of course Iran has their own agenda somehow they're going to be pulled together into this alliance to attack Israel God is going to do it himself look what he says down here <clears throat> in uh, verse 4 and I will turn thee back it's almost as if they turned around to go home and said no we don't want to do this we've already seen the destruction of what's already happened this is a bad idea but God says I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws God is going to drag them down he's gonna drag them down so that he can destroy them because he wants a name for himself among the Jews he wants the Jews to praise him and the Lord says over in um, Isaiah um, let me see if I can find it he said I will give land and peoples for thee is it in chapter 43 or 44 God has declared his love for Israel and he has um, he has promised to preserve them and it is He says, let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say, it is truth. And it is in this portion of scripture where the Lord declares that he will give people and land for the Jews. He, he will redeem them unto himself. And in the millennial kingdom, he will rule and reign from Jerusalem, and he will be victorious over these enemies. So looking back over in Ezekiel 38, you have, um, I am against thee, verse 3, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. Now, it's interesting that this person is called the chief prince because you have someone like Putin, who's been in power for many years. Um, he's getting the Constitution altered to be in power many more years. And he is behind the scenes um, working feverishly to win favor with these different people because he wants to be the dominant power in the Middle East. And meanwhile, we see the West diminishing. But God is allowing this to happen so that he can bring the nation of Russia and their allies down into Israel to destroy their armies. And it's going to be a vast army. Uh, we're going to see that it takes months and months to bury the dead, even with today's modern technology. But after this battle, they're going to be concerned about rebuilding a temple and restarting sacrifice upon the Temple Mount. So... The Lord says, Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. 
To me here, it almost seems like God is mocking them. That God is saying, be ready, be prepared, okay? Uh, Russia's a great army, be on guard and, and help your allies out. But we will find out later on that these allies don't get along. And every man's sword is going to be against his brother. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years, now, now we have a time period, in the latter years, thou shalt come back into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have always have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Israel, even in the midst of 120 million Arabs um, and other hostiles, they dwell fairly safely. Um, they're loaded with weapons. They have uh, technology to keep track of what's going on. But when they were brought back from all the nations, and as they started coming back into the land, even before 1948, um, the land was very arid and dry and didn't grow much, and Israel has turned it into a blossoming rose in the desert. <clears throat> Verse 9, thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. That is a very good description of tanks and helicopters and planes coming over the mountains into Israel um, at lightning speed. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. So it won't just be these nations, it'll be parts of armies attached to those nations. And remember, Israel isn't just going to be attacked from the north, but also from the south. Um, it's going to be Libya, uh, Persia, I'm sorry, Libya, Ethiopia, uh, at least part of Sudan. And these nations are going to come in from the south. Um, I've also read that um, both Russia and Turkey are establishing bases in Libya. Um, when America, their presence declined there, their presence increased. So they are going to be coming in at Israel from all sides, but it's not going to be a battle that they can win. So this is where I'm going to leave it for today. We're going to get back into Ezekiel 38 in the next video. So until next time, God bless you and take care.